camera I'm going to actually use to make this video. It's just a Sony HD. It's got like 8.9 megapixels or something like this. But it's one of these Sony Handycams. I'm using my phone to do this instead of the main video because my phone quality is just pretty terrible. So this thing comes on like this. I'll just spin it around a little bit. Alright, here we go. Alright, what's up everybody? So I want to take this opportunity to answer a whole bunch of questions because I always get a lot of questions about what type of equipment am I using. So I'm going to show you guys all the stuff that I have, not just like purely saxophone stuff. So right here, this is my 2009 MacBook Pro that I've been using. I will be replacing that very soon, probably sometime early 2018, next couple of months or so. And here I have this Ceramonic microphone recorder and this is generally supposed to be used with a smartphone I tried to use this with my GoPro that I'll get to next but I've not been very successful with being able to use that with that so when I upgrade my cell phone I will probably start trying to use this I imagine that there's probably apps that you can download that will allow this to be able to work a lot better and you can see it has this dual microphone thing at top and they both swivel they're like movable here and you have some adjustments here that you can make I got the one that comes with this handle thing here and uh, I'm looking forward to being able to put that to some use so right over here I do most of my uh, video camera stuff with this GoPro Hero 5 black and on top of that I have mounted this Sony Stereo microphone ECM XY ST1M. You can see you can adjust this microphone here. If you take a closer look, you can actually see that this doesn't really fit onto this GoPro mount that I have here, but it fits good enough for what I use it for, so I didn't completely freak out about that. So uh, if you are looking to get one of these kind of GoPro with this Sony setup, make sure that when you go into the settings, that you have the boost on with an unpowered microphone and what's not in is it's either not in the settings or not in the preferences it may default to a high noise atmosphere so you'll have to go in and make sure it's in stereo if it's in that high noise atmosphere then it'll just cut all the sound out it took me about three weeks to figure this out after i hadn't used this mouth after i hadn't used this microphone in a while so you'll need to buy one of these external um, adapters this is like an extra 50 bucks and over here I have this head strap that you see when I look like I'm going coal mining or something when I'm making these videos but that's come in pretty handy and overall I would have to say I'm relatively okay with this setup even though I'm not really that big of a fan of GoPro because the sound without that microphone is awful 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 I don't know if it's any better on the 6 but on the 5 you are definitely gonna need an external microphone of some sort uh, over here I have my neck strap that I use this is a BG saxophone harness I think that this is immensely better than the traditional neck straps however it still needs some room for improvement because adjusting it on the gig is a bit cumbersome so let's move on to I'll get to the sax later but I have over here teeth and mouthpiece saver this is made by Selmer only just realized that but I generally buy these in bulk because I work in the travel industry and it's kind of hard sometimes to be able to pick these up you get like three of these per pack and I found these to be very very useful over here I just have a screwdriver set you pick something like this up at Sears for not a whole lot of money so uh, here, this is my Cannonball Vintage Reborn Tenor Sax. And I'll let you get a good look at some of the engraving that's right here. But uh, I used to have the Brute finish with the Cannonball Reborn, but because I work in such a freakishly, freakishly humid climate, that horn started to really, it, it just started to get really bad. And it was hard to clean, and the maintenance was ridiculous so I've had a lot of success with this horn I'm very very happy with it get a look at the neck that's there and uh, for the reeds that I use I primarily use 
these Van Dorn two and a half or red box. Sometimes I use the green box, but uh, mostly these Van Dorn red box. Uh, every now and again, I'll switch back to the traditional. I use number twos, that's a two and a half with the red box. And I just picked up these V21 and V12 Van Dorns. I'm anxious to see what those are like. When I get those going, then I'll let you know what I think about those. So over here, this is the Crown Royal bag that every musician that I know has. Pretty much everybody has a Crown Royal bag, but I don't really know very many people that actually drink Crown Royal that are old enough to drink it anyway. <laughs> so I usually put my neck and maybe some reeds and mouthpieces and whatnot inside this Crown Royal bag. So for my case, this is a Protec case. Just want to show you this thing open here. And inside you have um, this bit right here, which you can put your neck. And then you can store a mouthpiece right here. The rest is all the same. It's a very good case, very sturdy. I like this kind of like army green color. The thing I don't like about this case, and I hope the people at Protec are watching, is that when you get this strap, it's way too short. It makes it extraordinarily difficult to carry the saxophone. Uh, one other thing about this case in particular is that it doesn't have an availability to carry a flute and I very often play flute and clarinet but it's very easy to just have like a flute side pouch which makes that a lot easier to move about. Also with this case when I bought it they were really big on advertising using it like a backpack you get like these clips here but what you don't get are the straps to actually use it like a backpack so I was a little put off by that but nonetheless it is a very solid very sturdy case way better than that gator case that I have where all the threading just started to rip within like a couple days of me even getting it so this is a very good case so I'll get to my mouthpieces next. all right ladies and gentlemen so here are all the mouthpieces that I have in my fleet right now so um, the ones that are in the boxes are the ones that I have not reviewed yet they are the new ones I'll be doing a review on those very very shortly so the way I've lined these up from right to left is basically my personal preference in terms of least favorite moving left to most favorite purely based on my personal preference all right, so starting all the way over here to the right, this is the Cannonball 7. I think that this mouthpiece is really good in terms of giving something to a guy that knows how to fix mouthpieces. You can shape it however you want with no real kind of penalty because you get it for free and there's enough material in it to be able to shape something nice. Which brings me to my uh, Selmer Soloist mouthpiece. So. Um, I was looking to kind of have a hard rubber mouthpiece that could get that Joe Henderson kind of thing. Anybody that does that and has that has definitely had this mouthpiece worked on. This is absolutely 100% a classical mouthpiece. I don't know if I'm going to work on this mouthpiece or not because I actually don't have, well I didn't have a classical mouthpiece. So uh, I'll probably just keep it the way it is and use it as a classical mouthpiece. That's how I will do the mouthpiece review when I do that one. So if I keep this one the way it is, I'll probably wind up just having this cannonball Joe Hendersonized as much as possible. So moving on, I have my Dukov M8 ranking all the way down here. I really do love the sound of this mouthpiece, but it's a bit of a wild dog. Uh, over here I have this uh, Yanagisawa 7 which is a very good kind of general mouthpiece. Uh, it's priced around 300 bucks. It's not too bad, but uh, it's quite a good mouthpiece. Over here, I have my Super Tone Master Auto Link. Already done a review of that one for you. Just on the strength of how good this mouthpiece is, it uh, inspired me to revisit Auto Link again. So over here, ranking just above that, is my Dukov L8. I would love to find a mouthpiece from Duke Off that's kind of a hybrid between the L and the M. That would be one for the record books for sure. So this is the only uh, Theo Wani mouthpiece that I actually have left. This is my Data 7 Star, the hard rubber one. 
comes with the ligature that's there. I know it's on upside down for those of you who are a bit particular about those things, but I uh, just wanted to make sure that you guys saw that. And behind that, I have the uh, Fiowani pouch that that comes with. Uh, I really like this pouch. What I don't like about it is that it has Theowani written on it. And if there is someone that knows what a Theowani product is and it's laying out, they know it is a very expensive product. So whenever I actually have this laying around, I usually turn it around like I do right there. Uh, really good pouch though. Uh, over here, I have my Cannonball 5J. This has been my saving grace because this is a uh, 85 tip opening and around the holiday season or when you have these long shows where you're not really doing a lot of like solo type stuff and you need to play a lot one of these kind of mouthpieces is fantastic I don't particularly love the way it sounds so I was highly motivated to get this mouthpiece here which is the Autolink Modern Vintage Hard Rubber I got this in a five star facing because I want that low facing easy to play kind of hard rubber mouthpiece and next to that I have what is going to rank very very high modern vintage metal auto link this is a six star 95 tip opening and uh, I've played through this already and I'm very excited to really get this thing going um, I'll open these up when I do the review and I'll go into more detail about those mouthpieces so over here I have my metal brill heart. I'll move this around a little bit so we can get this in the light. This is the one that you've pretty much heard me do all of my altissimal work in my videos on. I have unofficially retired this mouthpiece because I needed to just get used to using what is my number one mouthpiece and that is the Van Dorn T6 Paris small chamber mouthpiece that's here. So you've seen my review on that. Thank you for all you people that are watching and re-watching those. I very much do appreciate it. And that's all the stuff that I have for you, ladies and gentlemen. So I will be putting out some videos of this Selmer Paris soloist and both of the auto links that I just picked up. So that's all the stuff that I have, at least that I can think of right now. And thank you very much. See you.